The fans here are ready to go wild. into the end zone. Ooh. An incredible catch. Ah! Ah! Intercepted. Mike Hilton. Let's go. Hendrickson is fighting for the sack. Crown. Hendrickson stripped it. What a year he's having. Nah, I'm open. I'm always open. Caught by Chase. And he is gone. The commit- oh. One final time for the 2023 season, as the Bengals look to put on a show in the jungle for the home crowd. Welcome in to Bengals Weekly, I'm Marissa Contepelli. The Bengals cap off the season with the Battle of Ohio, as Cincinnati throws one more party at Paycor Stadium. So as we get you set for kickoff between the Browns and the Bengals, we had Mike on the mic in Kansas City, and we'll take you down to field level to listen in. We'll also roll the film on the best plays of the season by this year's rookie class. Bengals legend Anthony Munoz joins the show and tells us why he believes the Bengals will be contenders in 2024. And on Countdown, I'll tell you how consistent of a season Logan Wilson had and where he ranks among linebackers since he was drafted. But first, the Bengals suit up one final time this season as this team wants to go out with a win to carry over that positive momentum into next season. It's also another opportunity for the young players in the locker room to show what they're all about. We didn't expect to be in this position this year, but these guys have still fought to the bitter end, you know, and we got one more game to fight and we're going to try to win this game. Obviously, we expected to be here playing for seeding, playing for the playoffs, but that's not how it worked out. And it's unfortunate, you know, we put in the work, we, we fought hard for a long season, and we came up short. Obviously it's been a rough year for us, but one thing I can say about these guys is that we never gave up. We have a lot left to play for this week. You know, it's our, our fans have supported us. We get a home game, chance to reward ourselves with a hard fought win. We owe it to ourselves. We certainly owe it to our fans who've supported us through thick and thin, you know, and been there every step of the way and ending on the right note with a win. That matters a lot to us. Anytime you go out there, you want to win. I mean, just the fact that beginning of this week, Jamar says, no, I'm playing. And everybody's like, here we go. Like, let's lock in. Let's, let's finish this thing right. We've been battling. There's been some ups and downs. We've dealt with a lot of adversity as a team. Let's just finish this thing positive. We still got one more game left to finish with a winning season and that's important to us, it's important to the fans. So we're gonna go out there and fight hard. We stand here! We stand here, man, let's go! I think what this this group has shown is a lot of potential. A lot of eagerness, a lot of potential, a lot of the things that we were hoping to, to get when we drafted them, we've seen it. The Bengals pick it up, go. Turner's running it back. He's the speedster, he's got daylight, inside the 30, one man to beat. Under pressure, sacks him at the 17-yard line. You don't look at a single guy in this class and say, like, man, we might have missed there. You know, you don't feel that. Again, we, we got another game to play, and we're expecting on those guys to step up big, and we, we expect their best in Week 18. Go out there and kill. Go out there and hunt. You know, uh, play ferocious, play with intensity, you know, play physical. Go out there and try to dominate from start to finish. The whole year, that's always been my mentality, just to show what I can do whenever I get put in the game. I just want to do the best that I can. I'm just going to show up and do my job, and if there's an opportunity there to, you know, maybe get a few more carries or get the ball in my hands a little bit more, I'll take it. We still have a job to do. We got we to gotta go win a football game, you know what I mean? Not a lot of people are able to do what we do, so we, we can't take it for granted no matter what part of the year it is. We got a roster of guys that I know are going to put their best effort forth 
all we can practice and on the game and and so we're gonna have a great plan you know it's it's we're doing everything we can to win this game and end the season on a high note Coming up next, we check in with Mike Hilton, who is mic'd up at Arrowhead. Stay with us here on Bengals Weekly. That was a little too close. Bengals Weekly is brought to you by Alta Fiber, proud to be the official internet provider of the Cincinnati Bengals. Paycor, proud to be the official HR software provider of the Cincinnati Bengals. And Kettering Health, the official healthcare provider of the Cincinnati Bengals. Mike Hilton has already reached season highs in tackles, tackles for lost, and has the most sacks in a season since he recorded three in 2020. So we had to get Mike on the mic one more time before the season came to a close. We now take you down to field level to listen in. Hey, five two. Why are you trying to bury me in the ground like I'm only, I'm only 180 pounds? Bro? It has become one of the NFL's best rivalries. The Bengals and Chiefs is as good as it gets. Lead the way. Lead the way. I'm mic'd up, by the way. I'm mic'd up. I'm mic'd up. Let y'all know. Mic'd up. Dude, back at it. Let's go. Oh, let's go. Be yourself. Y'all know where we at, man. Big AFC matchup. Where else would you rather be, man? Sit back and enjoy the show. That was a little too close. Whatever we gotta do, fellas. I love this. The big play is gonna come. Browning throws. Nice. Caught by Mixon. Nice. Driving toward the end zone. Touchdown! Beautiful. Yes, sir! Yes, sir! Yes, sir! Two eight! From the jump, fellas. From the jump. Let's go. Let's go to work. Every play, make them feel it. I got it! I got it! Move! Mike Hilton at five foot nine packs a punch. Woo! Hey, good stop! Hey! Good stop, yo! It's third and goal. Half yard away. And they're going to go up top. Run, Jay. No, he's going to run for it. And he's in for the touchdown. Able to somehow slide off the hit. Shit, Jay. Let's see, oh. Keep it going, oh. So get it. Woo, woo. Here we go, here we go. Wiped out right away by Mike Hilton. Come on, man. Come on, man. Hey, just keep making them kick field goals, but we can play better. For sure, on, for go, sure. Man. Good tackle, boy. Good tackle, JV. Come on, fellas. Let's go. Big stop right here, man. Come on, man. Come on, now, let's go. Come on, now. Hey, five, two. Why are you trying to bury me in the ground like I'm only, I'm only 180 pounds, bro? Oh, 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 oh. Appreciate you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. This year's rookie class saw a lot of game action and had a handful of memorable highlights. Let's now send it over to Dave Lapham, who rolls the film and breaks down some of the best plays from this year's rookie class. Cincinnati Bengals had an impressive draft class, no question about it. Eight rookies were drafted. Every single one of them had a role, and the role expanded for a lot of them during the course of the season. Guys made big plays at big times during the football season, and they grew. And that's tough to do as a rookie. Let's take a look at some of their performances. Let's take a look at Miles Murphy right here. He has got all the physical traits, checks every box. He can rush the passer. This is one of his three quarterback sacks. Watch the arm extension, and then watch the arm over and then acceleration to the quarterback. That is athleticism right there. Miles Murphy's got it all. Take a look at DJ Turner right here in one-on-one -on -one coverage. He's gonna have a safety late over the top, but look at this, turn, run. Look at the athleticism to play the ball. I mean, he had a receiver that can fly and DJ Turner matched him stride for stride. He can cover. Watch Jordan Battle right here at the safety position. Lou Anarumo likes his versatility. 
He can play quasi linebacker for him, line up at safety, do a lot of things. Watch the read right here. Wide receiver, can really run. Undercuts the, the rush end. Jordan Battle, all over him. Good angle, catch, no gain. Big time play in space. And you think of Charlie Jones, his contribution to the football team, you think 81 yard punt return was huge. Charlie Jones surveying the field right here. He's gonna get north and south as quickly as he possibly can. Once he finds a lane, he's gonna hit it. Watch Chase Brown right here, another rookie. Watch the block that he's gonna make for him. Takes his man all the way off the football field. And then it's pure speed, Charlie Jones. Punter's not gonna tackle him. He's taking it to the house, man. Chase Brown. Watch him in this screen pass. It's everything you need to know about Chase Brown right here. He's got the football in space, screen pass, watch his, his lineman get out in front for him. Watch this. Okay, I got it. I got it. I'm going to try to split these two. I can undercut them and still make a play on Chase Brown. No, not with that kind of speed. Woo! Accelerate. Sayonara. Off to the races. Nice move to finish it. Touchdown. Explosive. All sorts of running room and blockers in front. He's flying to the 30. Cuts back. Makes a man miss. Touchdown! Andre Yosivash right here played a lot of special teams as well as the receiver position. He gets off the line of scrimmage, finds a little hole in the zone. Joe Borough doesn't like it. He's out of pocket. So Yossi now has to scramble drill and create. Good job. Come inside. Work your way back to the quarterback. Work your way back to the pylon. Make the throw easier for Joe Burrow. Good job. The Bengals are evaluating young talent that's going to help this football team. In your rookie year, you're not quite sure. You don't know what you don't know. But then you come back another offseason, second year, advancement in terms of your role and the snaps that you take. Cincinnati Bengals' future is definitely bright. Up next, we sit down with Anthony Munoz as the Bengals legend looks ahead to next season. Welcome back to Bengals Weekly. The Bengals have a lot to look forward to next season as the foundation is laid in place. Bengals legend Anthony Munoz now joins Dan Horde to tell us what catches his eye when it comes to this young, talented roster. For our final game preview of the year, we turn to the greatest Bengal of all time, Anthony Munoz. And Anthony, unfortunately, the Bengals cannot go to the playoffs this year at 8-8. Eight and eight. What do you think they're playing for against Cleveland on Sunday? Well, let's put it this way. Uh, interstate rivalry, pride, just to have a positive feeling in your mouth when you head into the offseason to get ready. There have been positives this year, and one of the biggest is that they know definitively that they have a good backup quarterback in Jake Browning. What did he show you in the last month and a half? Well, I think competitiveness, uh, he wasn't rattled, uh, you know, and I like that with the young guy. When you come in uh, and you know you're filling in some big shoes and you just aren't rattled, I was happy to see that. So many things have to go right for a team to win a Super Bowl. And for this season, for the Bengals, the adversity started on day two of training camp when Joe Burrow strained his calf. How difficult is that for a professional football player when you're riding that roller coaster all season long? I think it makes it even more difficult when it's the most important player on your team. Even though you knew he was going to be back, you just hate to see that at the beginning of the season. It, it was sad to see, and then all of a sudden you see him coming on, uh, and things are getting better, and then you see the thing with the wrist. So, uh, you know, it's one of those things. You, know, you talk about the last game of the season. Let's, let's wipe that out. Let's rehab, and let's get back healthy and get rolling for 2024. As we take stock of this season and look ahead to 2024, what are some areas that you would like to prioritize for this team to reach its potential going forward? It's an area that uh, was overhauled. I think we still need to, to continue to work on that offensive line. And for me, it's more consistency. I think we have individuals that are capable of doing it, but I, I'd have to say that's probably one of the areas that I would love to see more consistency and come along with is, uh, yeah, let's keep throwing the football. But when it's time to run the football, let's be physical and make the defense pay for it. Last thing for Anthony Munoz, last year, Joe Burrow famously said, the Super Bowl window is my entire career. And now he's signed with the Bengals through 2029, at least, hopefully many years beyond that. In your mind, do they go right back to being one of the top Super Bowl contenders next year when Joe's healthy? I think so. I think um, 
I really believe they're very talented. And I think that uh, they still are one of the contenders. I think he comes back healthy. They get rolling. Uh, things go well in the offseason. I can't believe that they wouldn't be. Always great to pick your brain. Happy New Year. Thanks for joining us. Hey, Dan, always a pleasure to be with you. Happy New Year. And August will come quickly. Coming up next, it's time for Contepelli's Countdown, where I'll tell you what Trey Hendrickson needs on Sunday to make Bengals history. Stay with us here on Bengals Weekly. Bengals Weekly is brought to you by Betfred, the official sports betting partner of the Cincinnati Bengals, and your local Kia dealers. Visit kia.com to discover movement that inspires. This week's game is brought to you by On Location, the official hospitality partner of your Cincinnati Bengals. Visit onlocation.com for exclusive access to 50 yard line seats, official pregame parties, post game field access, and more. Your Super Bowl experience of a lifetime awaits only with On Location. As the Bengals get set to close out the season, there's still a lot to play for on Sunday. Rookies continuing to make their mark, and one of the best edge rushers in the game looking to put his stamp on Cincinnati football history, as Trey Hendrickson has the opportunity to do what no other Bengal has done before. Hendrickson enters the final week of the season tied for the most sacks in the league with 17. If he finishes this campaign with the most sacks in the NFL, it would be the first time in team history that a Bengal led the league in sacks for a season. Hendrickson has recorded a full sack now in seven straight games, the longest active streak in the league, as Trey also hit a new career high in sacks for a season at 17. Now Logan Wilson put together arguably his best season as a pro. Wilson brings in a team leading 130 tackles to Sunday. That's a new career high and the most tackles in a season by a Bengal since 2013. This also marks a third straight season Wilson has accumulated 100 or more tackles. And since the start of 2020, Wilson is just one of six players in the league with at least 300 tackles, five sacks, five interceptions, and five forced fumbles. Jermaine Pratt had himself a career year as well. Pratt's 116 tackles is a new career high and the first time he's eclipsed the 100 mark for a season. Pratt also hit career highs this year with three quarterback hits, seven tackles for loss, and two sacks, as he has tied his career best in interceptions. This season also marked the first time since 2019 where three Bengals surpassed 100 tackles with Wilson, Pratt, and Dax Hill. Well, Mike Hilton also put up strong numbers in his third season in stripes. Hilton set a new career high in tackles and tackles for loss while hitting the most sacks he's recorded since 2020. Hilton's 62.8 passer rating stands as the seventh lowest in the league this season, as Mike has logged at least five tackles in eight of his last nine games. And Joe Mixon found the end zone for the 10th time last week, making it the second time in his career he's hit double digits in scores. Mixon also logged 87 scrimmage yards in week 17, marking the 10th time this season he's hit at least 70. Mixon surpassed 1,200 scrimmage yards on the year as he is the only running back to record 1,200 or more scrimmage yards in each of the past three seasons. And with 77 rushing yards on Sunday, Jodine would reach 1,000 for the season. Contepelli's Countdown is presented by Betfred. And don't forget to download the Betfred app for your chance to win Bengals suite tickets and to take advantage of exclusive offers. The Bengals and Betfred remind you to gamble responsibly. It's now time for this week's Kettering Health Fantasy Report. Jamar Chase led the way this season for the Bengals, averaging over 17 points per game as his 96 receptions, almost 1,200 receiving yards, and seven touchdowns made him the highest scoring fantasy Bengal for the season. Chase's top outing this year was in week five, when Uno hauled in three touchdowns and 192 yards for a 52-point masterpiece against Arizona. Joe Mixon had a strong fantasy campaign as well, standing currently as the seventh scoring running back, 
as he averaged over 15 points per game. On the season, Mixon posted over 1,200 scrimmage yards to go along with his 10 touchdowns. His highest outing of the year came in Week 13, when he posted over 29 points against Jacksonville after a two-touchdown performance on Monday night. Thanks for tuning in to Bengals Weekly this week and all season long. Kickoff between the Browns and the Bengals is coming up. For Dan Horde, Dave Lapham, and our entire crew, I'm Marissa Contepelli. We'll see you next season. Bengals Weekly is brought to you by Ulta Fiber. Proud to be the official internet provider of the Cincinnati Bengals. Paycor, proud to be the official HR software provider of the Cincinnati Bengals. And Kettering Health, the official healthcare provider of the Cincinnati Bengals.